Hey, what's up guys? It's uh, Combat Saturday and today's topic is about the one inch punch. Okay, now that's one of those things that there's so much confusion over it. You know, uh, Bruce Lee first did that one inch punch way, way back in the 60s at this uh, um, Ed Parker Karate Tournament. And, uh, you know, it was a real showstopper. But ever since then, people think that that's like the end all and be all and they want to do it exactly the way he did it. And, have a guy line up behind a chair and do, do his thing and stand here and, and do that and you know unfortunately I mean I'm you know I'm glad he did it but it caused so much confusion I mean half of me wishes he never did it honestly but anyway let's just explain what the inch punch is okay and it's nothing mystical it's not about you know transferring your chi or any of this stuff okay it's it's physics and body mechanics okay so um a lot of people uh, think that the one inch punch is this thing where you have the hands very loose and you flick the wrist. That's what people are expecting to see. That's what they think it is, okay? Really, that doesn't actually have anything to do with it. I mean, maybe it contributes a, a, a tiny bit of power to it because the, just this sudden increased velocity, maybe, okay? But that is not the power source of the one inch punch, okay? It is the whole body. Okay, getting the whole body behind it, okay? Now, every, now if you watch that clip of Bruce Lee doing that, um, you know, really watch it. You, there, there's a you, uh, YouTube clips of that, okay? Now, you really watch that, and you'll see that um, the wrist flicking is not the major thing. You can see his whole body getting behind it. You can watch his whole body moving when you do that. That is where the power comes from, okay? All right, now, um, so when whenever you uh, punch, you need to get... The body behind it okay so what we call the immovable elbow principle here we want the hip like, like, like we can't just do that okay we need to get the hip behind it you see see how my hip is joined to my elbow right my hip is joining the elbow. and so getting that entire body power that's really the uh, key to it okay so one, um, of course, uh, a, a good way to, to train this. Now, this is um, a wrecking ball bag. I really like this this bag. It's very good for uh, close range punching, and particularly for the one inch punch. Okay, and and uh, I'll show you in a second with you. But when you do it, okay, try maybe start I don't know a few inches away, okay, and just kind of get used to hitting the the bag just gently. If you want. I'm, I'm just tapping it basically, right? But I'm tapping it mindfully. I'm getting my whole body behind it. See, I can twist it. I can just go straight. I can twist it. Okay, that's it. Okay, just to get used to that feeling. Okay, see, the whole body, see, that, that hip and the elbow are going together. Okay, and what happens, right? Boom! Right? Boom! And the reason why it works is because the whole body is behind it, right? Okay, other hand, right? More time. Okay, so that's, you know, the actual key to the inch power. And, and the thing about the inch power is that that, um, okay, it's possible you might be really close to, close to someone. That is possible. Like doing shovel hooks, that kind of thing. But um, really the way you want to think about it is that you want to have that energy on the end of every punch you do. Okay. I mean, that's a good way to train it in isolation. But really you want that on every punch you do. That's really the key to inch power. Understanding how to generate a lot of power in a very, very short distance. So the idea is that if you can do it in that short distance, then you can do it much better if you have this much room, okay? So that's the whole idea, all right? And uh, yeah, there, there we go, uh, inch power. The same thing can be done with a uh, kick as well. You know, you can take a, a bag and just, you know, use the whole hips behind it and get the kick into it, okay? You can do, or um, actually, uh, when I was uh, practicing uh, Muay Thai before, 
um, the Muay Thai coach had us doing what, what he called a half drill. So when he would want us to get our round kicks better, what he would do is that he would put the, the he, he, would, he would have us with, with, with our, our leg just, just like this, and then just flip it, you know, and try to, well, like, of course with his hand back there, and, you want, and he would try to get a lot of power in a very short distance as, as well, okay, called a half drill. So the only way to get the power is get, get your hip into it, pop, pop your hip, turn over your hip, and pivot on your foot, all right? And, um, you know, and so if you can get power that way, then when you actually step with it and you get the full power behind it, it's going to be, you know, a killer kick, okay? So the same idea, you know, a lot of people uh, use inch power um, without actually realizing it or calling it inch power. People are, are very, um, you know, I've spoken before about how people are obsessed with appearances. They want to look a certain way. You know, they, they have that image of uh, Bruce Lee doing a thing when he stands like this and... and you know, they just want to duplicate that. They think that that's how you practice inch power. No, I mean, okay, maybe you could practice. That could be one way, me, I guess. Okay, but uh, the much better way is to do it in a, a realistic way, uh, and and uh, you know, for like close, close range hits, that kind of thing. Just to say, I was doing it here, and just learn to get the body behind it. Okay, and that's how you get that inch power. Okay, actual inch power. All right. So there you go. You know. Um, Good thing I like about this bag is that, of course, you know it, it can move a lot, and you can see also the direction of your strike because if if you hit it and the bag starts spinning around too much, then you know that you're not hitting it straight. Okay, and obviously, if you're doing straight punches, you want to hit them straight. If you're doing a ripping hook or something, that's different. I mean, that then it's going to spin a little bit. You can't help that. Okay, but but um, but for straight punches, you obviously want them straight. Okay, and, and that's a thing. Or um, shelf or like in close, you, know, you want those. You, know, you want Dig them in there, you know. Don't don't think about uh, about your punching like a, a battering ram or a bludgeoning tool. Think of it like a gun or like a knife. Okay, so when you're punching, you're not just hitting somebody; you're actually stabbing someone or shooting somebody with a gun. Okay, that's the feeling you want. All right. Now, if you've ever seen footage of people being shot before, um, I had it's it's a little disturbing, but I have seen footage of it before. And what happens is that uh, in the movies, guys get shot and they go flying away. Okay, in real life, they're standing there, the bullet goes right through it, and they're like, boom, like, and, and that's it. They, they, they don't even know what happened. And then they just fall, fall down, okay? That's what, what actually happens, okay? If you took a big, big battery knife, you go flying away. But a bullet, it's just going to go right into your body or through your back, and you're just going to, and that's it, okay? So that's the, that's the kind of thing you want, okay? So, anyways. Anyway, okay, so anyway, there's, there's the uh, inch power. Uh, you have any uh, questions, uh, comments, or anything, let me know, and I'll uh, try to guess it.